Paolo Di Paolo is called the Italian Cartier Bresson for his humanity and precise look. He was among the first masters in his country, whose camera began to focus on ordinary people, everyday life scenes. For about 15 years, the photographer with great delicacy and participation took pictures of the life of Italians, the life of the local aristocracy, movie stars. With the advent of the paparazzi, a thirst for scandal, Di Paolo became disillusioned with the profession and left photography. A rare archive of negatives a true chronicle of post-war Italy was accidentally found in the basement by the photographer's daughter. It took more than 20 years of persuasion for Di Paolo's pictures to be seen by the world. In the 1940s, we decided to take cameras and approach photography in a new way, the photographer recalls. Each of us was an amateur, we were not professionals in the traditional sense then accepted. This approach would later be called humanistic photography. It turned out to be very timely, because people then began to look at photography and the world in general differently. So the photograph ceased to be a decorative element on the page of a magazine, but was filled with meaning. 573 photographs of Paolo di Paolo appeared on the pages of the progressive Italian intellectual magazine I Al Mondo, with which the photographer collaborated until its closure in 1966. The editor of the publication, Mario Panunzio, brought up an understanding of the value of photography in employees. Di Paolo repeated his words after more than once. A photograph does not have to be beautiful, it must be good. In his black and white chronicle, Di Paolo captured the world of a disappearing Italy. A turning point in the history of the country, when the past, its customs and foundations are leaving, giving way to new rules and a new life. In his photographs, young women in closed traditional clothes, veils, with baskets on their heads live side by side with girls in mini shorts strolling along the embankment. He filmed in the workshop of a Ferrari, at the same time showing the packed donkeys on which the peasants continued to carry their luggage. Di Paolo was looking for this, new, Italy with interest. Best of all, he managed to capture it during an editorial assignment a summer trip on which he went with the writer, then future director Pier Paolo Pasolini. The planned route ran along the coast of the country from south to north. In sepia tones, Di Paolo showed ordinary residents enjoying the sun, conversations, and summer. Each photo contains a short human story. A piercing shot of a peasant family. They stand barefoot at the water's edge and look at the sea, which they see for the first time. Boys looking at a car like the seventh wonder of the world, a mother bathing babies in a wooden tub, naked torsos of bathers. On one of these beaches in Brasilia, he took a portrait of Pasolini, who is staring at, sprawled on the hot sand, local boys. The writer and future director will later write that this beach was a favorite place for Bertolucci's walks. Thomas Mann came here. Huxley wrote his dry leaves of words. Here, Rilke wandered along its sand dunes. It was a unique journey of two people, one of whom was nostalgically looking for the ghosts of the past, while the other was trying to capture the subtle moment of the relationship between the past and new days. Toward the end of the trip, Pasolini asked Di Paolo to take a series of personal portraits of him. This is how the famous photograph of the director appeared at the foot of the cross, overlooking the outskirts of Rome, watching a random boy, but it seems like himself in his youth. Celebrities completely trusted Di Paolo. He was incredibly modest, tactful, valued privacy. Many priceless shots never made it to the press because Di Paolo felt they were too personal. So one day the photographer was invited to the villa of the Italian movie star Anna Magnani. Anna wished that it was Di Paolo who took a series of photographs with her son Luca. From childhood, the young man was crippled by polio. The paparazzi ruthlessly pursued him wanting to take the first photo. Magnani decided to order her own, hoping it would stop their persecution. Famous people like that in the portraits of Di Paolo there is not a single gram of staging. He managed to remove them in a moment of complete openness. Tennessee Williams hugging a dog on the beach, flirting with Marcello Mastriani Sophia Loren, Simone Cineret, and Eve Montan touchingly kiss, Monica Vitti and Michelangelo Antonioni are walking, reading a newspaper, the canonical portrait of Alfred Hitchcock, 
naked and vulnerable Charlotte Rampling bouncing on the steps of Brigitte Bardot. Struggling for sensationalism, paparazzi photographers baffled Di Paolo, who struggled to be a gentleman in photography. When the publication with which he collaborated closed in 1966, he sent a telegram to the editor. For me and other friends, the desire to be a photographer is dying today. Disillusioned with the profession, Di Paolo turned to his original specialization history and philosophy. With his family, he settled in a village near Rome, began to write books, devoted himself to growing grapes, restoring old cars. In the 90s, Di Paolo's daughter Silvia accidentally stumbled upon the photographer's dusty archive. Going down to the basement for skis, she found two and a half hundred negatives there, on which she was surprised to read the names, Sophia Loren, Gina Lalo Brigida, Alfred Hitchcock. So she learned that her father was a photographer, and not just a photographer, but a chronicler of his time. It took the girl 20 years for the phrase, They are mine, I made them when I was a photographer, I don't want to talk about it was replaced by an agreement to hold the first exhibition in 2019. Later there were other exhibitions, a book monograph, a documentary, which was shot by American director Bruce Weber. Paolo Di Paolo turns 97 in 2022. At the moment, daughter Sylvia is engaged in editing and cataloging a large-scale archive of her father's works, and exhibitions of the photographer's works are held at the National Museum of 21st Century Arts in Rome.